Hi, this is State Representative Rob Martwick, and I'm here in the Capitol in Springfield, Illinois. I'm standing in one of our many hearing rooms that we have here, and it's uh, pretty appropriate because this was a crazy week, is a deadline week to move your bills out of committee, so there was a lot that went on in these committee rooms. Um, but welcome. Uh, if you saw my little snafu earlier, my apologies for that earlier video. We had a little uh, hardware malfunction, but welcome to the first installment of a series that I'm calling Straight Talk Common Sense Solutions. Um, it is sort of a mantra that I ran on and that I believe here in Springfield. I believe that my job is to give you the straight talk. Uh, whether you want to hear it or not, um, we can agree to disagree, we can have different opinions, and I welcome that. Seriously, if you don't like what I say or you disagree with it, please reach out to me, write to me, let's have that dialogue, let's have that discussion. But what I thought I would do is I would touch on a number of topics that are pretty popular here and try and give you a counterpoint to what the popular belief is, right? Um, and so this week, uh, on this very first video, I'm going to touch on a real sensitive subject and yet a real popular subject, term limits, okay? Uh, now, term limits has been a, a mantra of the governor since he took office. He believes that we should stop all politicians from serving as long as they want to uh, or as long as we want them to and that we should restrict them to a certain number of years and what the governor has proposed is 10 years and so that's very popular a lot of people think hey why not why should policy why should we not make it just a, a temporary service and let people be forced out and move on to other things and so I don't know what you think about it but I th actually think it's a really bad idea and I'll tell you why uh, so before we begin, in case you're wondering how long I've been here, this is the beginning or middle of perhaps my fifth year of service here. So I would not be affected by this term limit, uh, call for term limits for some time. Um, but nonetheless, let's talk about what term limits is and what it does and how would we work here, all right? So what I'm going to tell you over the next few minutes is I'm going to give you three reasons why I think term limits are bad, okay? Number one, I think they're completely and totally unnecessary. I don't think we need to impose term limits to accomplish what we want. Number two, I think where term limits have been instituted, they don't work. In fact, I think they make government work worse, and I'm going to tell you about that too. And finally, I think that what term limits do, unlike what the governor says, is let's give people their democracy back by installing term limits. I think, and I'm going to tell you why, I think term limits takes your democracy away from you, and I think that's a bad thing. So let's start from the top. Number one. Governor Rauner says we should limit legislators to 10 years of service. And most people say, well, 10 years, that sounds like enough. Why don't we do that? And I say, why do we need to? Um, so I did a little math, and I went through all of the 118 members of the Illinois House of Representatives, and I added up on their sheet. I did it by hand. Here, I'll show you a picture of it. All 118. Yes, I ran out of room and I had to go down the sides here. And I put in all of their years of service and I added them all up and figured out what percentage of people would be affected by this 10-year term limit. Well, starting at the top and working my way down, um, we have, well, I'll just go right to the 10 years. 78% of the members in the Illinois House of Representatives have served 10 years or less. 78%, almost 8 out of 10, have served less than the 10 years. What does that mean? That means every year there is a large turnover. And yes, oftentimes this large turnover involves people who have served for a long time. But what you're seeing is, is that there is this natural progression, turnover in the House. And if 80% of the people are serving less than 10 years, why do we need to limit it to 10 years? Just in case you're wondering, 86%, uh, excuse me, 72% of the people uh, in the House of Representatives have served eight years or less. And here's a number for you. 62%, almost two-thirds of the House, have served less than six years. So when you've got two-thirds of the Illinois House of Representatives serving less than six years, there really is no need to accomplish what you want to accomplish. There is, it is already happening. And why is it happening? Because voters are either people are saying, I, I've served long enough and I'm going to get out, I'm going to voluntarily subject myself to term limits, or voters have said, that's enough, we don't like what you're doing anymore, we're going to make a change and, and elect someone new. So now, that, that's why I say it's not needed, right? Number two, I said term limits doesn't really work. 
Well, what do I mean by that? Well, you remember I said about 80% of the people here would be have already serving 10 years or less, meaning 20% have served more than 10 years. So why would we want to get rid of them? Are they the problem? And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Now understand something, we have a citizen legislature here in the state of Illinois and in every legislature throughout the country, meaning no one has to be an expert to serve here. Anyone can come here and we have everyone from all walks of life, whether it be a, a single mother, whether it be an attorney like myself, an architect, a plumber, a police officer, uh, a funeral director, a guy who auctions used cars, all of these people, a farmer, all serve in this legislature. Yet we're required to vote on very, very complicated legislation like energy policy, uh, 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 complicated uh, rewrites of, of Medicaid, um, telecommunications law. These are massive bills with uh, huge, very, very complicated provisions in them. And I will tell you from personal experience that the people who are able to understand these and push back against the lobbying interests who might be seeking to take a little advantage one way or the other are the representatives that have the experience because they've learned about the subject matter during their time here. Now I will tell you I have had discussions with lobbyists who will tell me off the record that they prefer states where there is term limits. These exist and, and someone who I know who's a lobbyist told me that the best states to lobby are in those states because with all of these constant legislators being new, none of them having any sort of institutional knowledge about the subject matter on these complicated issues, they're able to by and large get what they want because there isn't anyone to push back on their efforts to push legislation in their direction. That's not a good thing for government policy. If lobbyists and staff are writing the legislation that become the laws that affect your life, who do you hold accountable? If I pass a bill that you don't like, you can throw me out of office or any other elected official, but you can't throw a lobbyist out of office. So I really think that term limits, where it's been imposed, makes your government run worse, not better, runs worse. Now finally, one of the things that Governor Rauner talks about a lot is about term limits is about giving democracy back to the people. But here's the thing, I am a strong believer in democracy and I think that one of the most fundamental rights in a democracy is being able to vote for whoever you want. The government doesn't meddle in your elections. And so if I go in to a voting booth and I say I want to vote for my representative Joe Smith, I expect Joe Smith to be on the ballot if he so chooses. What I don't want when I walk into the voting booth is to have the government tell me that they think I don't make a good decision and therefore Joe Smith is not on the ballot and I don't get to vote for him. That's a real problem. This is a fundamental question. I should be able to vote for whoever I want to. You should be able to vote for whoever you want to and make the change when you think it's necessary. What if you really like your representative and you want them to continue serving? Uh, it's wrong for us to say no matter whether you're doing a good job or a bad job, you, don't, the, you the voter, don't get to choose whether or not that person stays in office. The big brother government's going to do it. I think that is us giving up a fundamental right under democracy and I never think we should do it. So I've told you why I think it's not needed because it's already happening. I've told you how I think it harms our government because you, take a, you, get, a, you get rid of people who have the knowledge on the important bills. And number three, I've showed you how it really diminishes your rights under a democracy. So if I know that, wouldn't it make sense that a person like Governor Rauner, who's a very smart man, would know that too? So then the question becomes, well, why would Governor Rauner and certain of his friends be pushing so hard for term limits? Why are they trying to convince you that term limits are a good idea? So let's think about this. Let's say your representative, Joe Smith, is the guy that you really like. See, if Governor Rauner decides he doesn't want Joe Smith in, he could probably come in and spend a whole bunch of money on his candidate to try any bad pieces of mail or TV ads to try and make Joe Smith look bad. If you know Joe Smith and you like Joe Smith and you think Joe Smith does a good job, you're going to vote for him no matter what the governor says about him. That's already happened in some elections where the governor's tried to take out some colleagues here, right? You have the power 
to elect your person, not the money. The money doesn't have the power. But what happens if Joe Smith can't run for office and you show up on voting day and your candidates for representative are candidate X and candidate Y? The big question is, which one are you going to vote for? And you know what? I know exactly who you're going to vote for. You're going to vote for the candidate who has the most money. See, if you don't know who the candidates are and you don't know what they're about, statistics say that the candidate who communicates the most, who sends the most pieces of mail, who has the most television commercials, who has the ability to get his name out in front of you, you're more likely to vote for him. Maybe not you personally, but society in general. When they don't know the two candidates, the one with the most money, by and large wins. So you see, if Governor Rauner can't get rid of a state representative because that representative is doing a good job, once you pass term limits and you get rid of them, then the governor's money has a lot more influence. That might just be why Governor Rauner thinks term limits are a good idea. And that's exactly why I think they're a bad idea. It's bad for democracy. We've already got too much money in politics. And all this does is perpetuates the influence of money and diminishes the ability of common, everyday, middle class, working class people to have control over their government. That's why I think it's a bad idea. Now, you might not agree with me, and that's okay. I'm happy to hear it, and I'm ha happy to debate with it. Um, so reach out, comment here, uh, send me a message on Facebook, send me a message on email, reach out to me on my website, reach out to me at my district office. I'm always happy to have the conversation. I love being down here. I love representing you. I love this process, and I love democracy, and that's why I'm against term limits. Um, let me hear your thoughts, and until next time, thanks for watching.